All right, let's uh, look at the next question from the November 2022 paper, which was paper one, and this is question nine. And question nine reads as follows. It says, given f of x is equal to x squared, determine the minimum distance between the point 10 to 2 and a point on f. All right, now, we don't know what the point is, but we want to find the minimum distance between the given point and a particular point on our graph. So first of all, this would work better if we had the picture. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the graph of f of x equals x squared, and that's going to be a parabola because uh, that's actually what the quadratic function looks like. Okay, um, after that, this is obviously where the x-axis would be, and this is where the y-axis would be located. So this is basically what we know. For example, when x is negative 1, we know that the graph will have a y value of 1 because that's what you get when you substitute negative 1 in the equation. When x is negative 2, the graph would be at 4, somewhere here, okay? The graph would be at 4. So we know this information, right? We know this. For example, when x is 1, the graph will be 1 again, and when x is 2, the graph is going to be at 4 again. So this is what we know. This is how a parabola behaves, okay? This matches with that. Now, where is this point on this particular story? We know that x is 10 way far on the right hand side. Let's just say the point has x as 10 somewhere here, and the y coordinate is 2. So there's a point somewhere here where x is 10 and y is 2, so somewhere between 1 and 4. This is where the point with coordinates 10 and 2 would be located. Now, there's, the, there's, a, there's a distance here. We want to know, of course, if I drew uh, a line from here to there, and call that line one, and drew another line here from here to there, and call that line two, and drew another one from here to there. The, the, the distances of these lines are different, okay? If I drew one that goes this way, clearly, the last one is the longest of all these lines, okay? And that one is also longer, the shortest of all of them, which is what they're asking us. They want us to find the minimum distance between this point and our graph. So clearly, it can't be this one. That's a very long line. The shortest one is going to be the one that is perpendicular to your graph, okay? So just keep that in mind, right? So I'm going to delete all the other ones and then just focus on, um, on, on the one that matters, okay? Let's remove this and remove all of them. I'm just going to put one graph, one line that is going to be the one that makes sense. The one that we need is going to be a line that will have to be perpendicular, okay? From here, let's call this point, I don't know, let's call it point B and then we'll call the one at which the graph meets this line, point A. So from A to B, this is the shortest distance. The shortest distance will have to be perpendicular mm -hmm. to the tangent of this parabola. They have to be perpendicular to each other. That's the shortest distance between two points. It's the perpendicular distance, very important. So we don't know the coordinates of that point of contact. I'm gonna call the uh, point A. It's X coordinate, let's just say it's X. If the x coordinate is x, you substitute that x coordinate to figure out what the corresponding y coordinate is going to be. That means the y coordinate is going to be x squared, okay? So I've got the coordinate of this, I've got the coordinate of that, I need to know the minimum distance here. Okay, the minimum distance we can get between these two points. So I can be able to figure that out if I know what the coordinates of A are, because then I can just do distance formula. Very simple. Okay, cool. Now, how do I actually work this out? Well, there's a few things that we need to know. First of all, what is the gradient of the tangent? The gradient of the blue line, the line that I drew there, because I need to get the coordinates of A. So I'm gonna use the fact that at that point where they meet each other, I can figure out what the gradient of the tangent is going to be, okay? Something very powerful here. I'm gonna use gradients here. So first of all, the gradient of the blue line and the gradient of these two lines, because they're perpendicular to each other, their gradients, we'll just see the gradient of the line AB multiplied by the gradient of the tangent should give us negative one because they're perpendicular to each other. So I have an equation in that. What's the gradient of uh, the line AB? Well, the gradient of AB is change in Y over change in X. So it's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. That's the gradient of the line AB. Now, if I know that one, I can use it to figure out the gradient of the tangent. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent is always what you're looking at upside down with an opposite sign. Because I need something that I can multiply this with to get, to get an answer of negative 1. So it will be negative 
whatever you're looking at upside down. So I'll have x minus 10 at the top, and I'll have x squared minus 2 on the denominator. Okay, very simple. Okay, now that I've got that, I can now say, okay, fine, I have this, and I'm happy about it. That's the equivalent of the tangent, and I can, of course, equate it to the tangent of the parabola, because uh, the gradient of the tangent and the gradient of the parabola are equal at that point of contact. But what is the gradient of the parabola? You can work that out by working out the derivative of the function. If I'm interested in figuring out what the gradient of this is, it is always going to be equal to the derivative of your function. So I'll derive it to get the gradient. And since it's x squared, I think you'll agree with me that the gradient of the parabola, the function, okay, will be equal to the derivative of the graph, which is going to become 2x, okay? But at the point where they meet each other, they should be equal. So that means that I'm going to say 2x should be the same as negative uh, x minus 10 over x squared minus 2. Then from here, I think I'm going to divide both sides by negative. I'll get negative 2x is x take away 10 over x squared minus 2. And then from here, I think if I cross multiply, I'm gonna get negative two x cubed. Uh, I think I'm gonna get positive four x equals two x minus 10. And if I just group stuff here, I'm gonna get negative two x cubed plus three x um, plus 10 should give us zero, all right? So I don't know, I'm looking for a number that can make uh, my uh, equation two. And I think if you sub two here, if we sub two, we're going to get the answer here. I'm looking at it to use your knowledge of solving equations, cubic equations, to try and find what x value will make this equation true. And it turns out that, in fact, even by looking at it, you can see that it has to be a positive value of x. And that value that we are talking about, if you're looking at it closely, I think if you sub 2 in this equation, you're going to get an answer of 0. So it turns out that x equals to 2 satisfies the equation. That becomes the solution to this particular question. So that implies that if I go back to this and I try and figure out what x is here, it means that the x value there is 2. And if I want to find the y corresponding value, I have to sub 2 on the equation of the parabola, and I'm going to get the number 4. So subbing back into the equation of the function that we were given, we're getting an answer of 4. Okay, so that means y is 4. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, that means our picture is now complete. We can work out the distance. What do I mean by that? I mean, we've got the parabola there. It's awesome. It's sitting here with point 2 is to 4. And then it turns out that the distance can be figured out because we know our, our A is and our B here. We were told it's 10 and 2. Okay, we want to find that the length of that distance. And by the distance formula, AB is the square root of uh, x2 minus x1. So I'm going to say uh, 10, take away 2 squared, and then add that with 2, take away 4 squared. So that's 8 squared, which is 64. And the other one is negative 2 squared, which is 4. So I'm literally sitting with the square root of... Uh, 68 there, and if you wanted to uh, simplify it further and write that in simple set form, it just becomes 2 square root of 17. And that is how you can uh, work out the minimum length of this question that involves applications of differential calculus.